In the last video, we have introduced the concept of the rate law for a reaction. Okay, so the rate law tells you how the rate of a reaction depends on the concentration uh, of the species intervening in the reaction. So for example, for a generic reaction A plus B uh, to give C plus D, we would write the rate law as rate is equal to a rate constant multiplied uh, by the concentration of uh, reagent A to an order, which we in principle don't know, uh, multiplied by the concentration of the other reagent to the power of an order that we also need to determine and we don't know a priori. Right, this video deals with the concept of the pseudo order. Okay, so imagine for a second that uh, this being happens to be uh, a solvent, for example, water. In this case, then, we will be talking about reaction of a hydrolysis of A uh, that yields C and D. Now, uh, when you think about the uh, rate law, right here, we would describe this simply as uh, the concentration of water to the power of Y. Right. There's something uh, uh, very important here, and that is that uh, water is the solvent. And in that case, what this means is that uh, the concentration of water is going to be much, much greater than the concentration of the reagent. Okay? Uh, as a matter of fact, what will happen is that the concentration of this reagent A is so small compared to the concentration of water that after the reaction has been completed, the amount of water that you have in solution has changed very little. Okay, so for all practical purposes, when you have that uh, uh, this reagent is in great excess compared to the other one, okay, you can actually assume that uh, this concentration that you have right here hasn't changed. Okay? As a matter of fact, you can write that this is equal to the concentration sub zero, which will be the concentration at the start of the reaction. Again, that is simply due to the fact that there's so much uh, excess of water in this, in this case that even if there's a little bit that reacts to generate products, the concentration doesn't change very much. Okay, so then what happens is that this now is actually a constant uh, number. It doesn't change as the reaction takes place. The concentration of A is not, is not constant. A will disappear as the reaction takes place, but the concentration of water will, will not change much. But so we could, what we can actually do is consolidate this into something a little bit more compact. Okay, notice that this is a constant, and that is constant, so then one can rewrite this rate law as simply this. Rate is going to be equal to K prime multiplied by the concentration of A to the power of X. Okay, where well this K prime is simply uh, equal to K multiplied by the concentration of water that you had initially to the power of Y. Okay, and again, this is a constant number uh, when we're writing the reaction with water as a solvent. Right, so this is the concept of the pseudo order of the reaction. In this particular case, when we study uh, this rate law, we will do experiments to determine uh, the order of the reaction with respect to A. Uh, it will not be of interest to us to determine uh, the reaction order with respect to water, because water is, uh, is going to be uh, in a constant concentration. Okay, so the dependence on the, on the concentration of water really doesn't matter uh, uh, too much. Right, so for example, if we determine after doing some experiments, that this uh, reaction order happens to be one, then we will say that the reaction uh, uh, has been studied uh, in pseudo first order conditions. Okay, or we will say that this, this pseudo first order reaction uh, has this particular rate constant or, or anything else, right? So, so that's the concept of pseudo order. Uh, this order that we calculate right here is not really the overall order of the reaction, it's simply the order with respect to the reagent that is of interest the other order has a little significance and we avoid it. Okay, so, so again, that's the concept of the pseudo order uh, of a chemical reaction.